जय हिंद व्यूअर्स वी वेलकम यू बैक टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ एक्सपर्ट ओपिनियन फ्रॉम एम आर ओ डाइजेस्ट फोरम्स वी हैव अ नंबर ऑफ मेंबर्स हुव गॉट एक्सपर्टीज इन वेरी लार्ज नंबर ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी फील्ड्स एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द काउंटर ड्रोन एफर्ट्स विच आर देयर फॉर काउंटरिंग स्वाम ड्रोन्स आवर गेस्ट टूडे is the lieutenant general tsa narayanan he has more than 40 years of experience in technology education and training research and development and in mro and administration as commandant mceme he organized a national seminar on ai for prescriptive maintenance he also undertook large number of ai projects he was the chief architect for demonstrating the offensive swarm drone uh, concept during army day 2021 in collaboration with a startup so recently when i came across this article which was talking about uh, the uh, pentagon's efforts to create a uh, to a counter swarm drone so as you can see in the article it says that pentagon's counter drone office to demonstrate a swarm drones in 2024 the key line over here is that they will be focusing on neutralizing swarm drones of unmanned swarms of unmanned aircraft or swarm drones now they are uh, it's the article says that uh, flooding the battlefield with a large number of drones especially those able to fly in a coordinated uh, fashion is a threat the united states military is trying is still trying to address so when i read this line i recollected uh, that we have an expert with us general narayanan who has given an extensive talk on very this very aspect so i thought maybe we can uh, ask him for his expert opinion and i'm very happy to say that he has kindly consented and he is here with us so general narayanan over to you can you give us uh, your thoughts on uh, you know this the fact that this this is such a important uh, thing and it is so difficult to counter and they are finding it difficult to do that in spite of the you know very uh, technical uh, abilities they possess general narayanan please thank you sir thank you very much for the introduction sir uh, usa has been working on this uh, anti swarm drones for a lot of time but before we understand uh, we go to this anti swarm drones we should understand uh, what are the swarm drones we have before this on a program spoken about drones and how they affect the military warfare as such but swarm drones is one step ahead sir now swarm drones are large number of drones uh, which can collaborate in a decentralized manner to achieve a common objective so basically they uh, work on that swarm intelligence which you know involves self organization they can adopt they can collaborate to accomplish various tasks otherwise which will be very difficult to accomplish by individual drones now what are the swarm drones have actually in that first of all is a distributed intelligence each drone has got its own intelligence and autonomy so there is nothing called a central controller or a single leader in the drones each drone is itself a leader or a follower and they can interact with each other and the environment and these drones can make their own decision based on the local information so it's a central decentralized decision making because for which it gets the various sensory inputs it along with other drones are from the uh, from the uh, other drones and from the control if required but there is no central decision making authority the collective behavior of this emerge from the distributed decision they can do local communication with each other that is one drone can speak to another drone before they make their decisions and they have the sensing mechanism they can adopt they can adopt to the changes in the environment or the mission requirement suppose if a swarm of uh, encounters obstacles or some disruption the swarm the drones can dynamically adjust their behavior to find alternative solution so if some drones are shot i'll give an example the other drones can take on its task so that is the kind of robustness 
it has gone and scalability you can you know have a song drone from 10 drones till 1000 the best part is the software will be generally same so scalability is very fast to increase the number of drones now what are the technologies in this song drones as such one is ad hoc mesh networking these drones are always on a mesh network in a decentralized communication network each node, each drone will act as a node and a router also. So these drones can communicate directly with the nearby drones and also relay message to others that are out, out of the communication zone. Plus multi-hop communication. These strong drone systems, they have a multi-hop communication which enables message to be relayed through multiple intermediate drones to reach a distant drone that might be beyond the direct radio range so by this creating a chain of communication the swarm can establish communication link with drones that are far away there's something called a swarm management protocols which discover which uh, where, where drone discover and how to you know how the drones can join the swarm how they can get out of that so that is part of this that is basically a software i'll call it broadcast and multicast very important so broadcast, as you all, uh, as you sir, you all know, is a communication method where a message is sent from one drone to all other drones in the swarm, whereas the multicast is for a specific drone. Dynamic spectrum sharing, this enables uh, drones to share the available spectrum in a cooperative manner. This approach allows drones to negotiate and, and allocate frequency among themselves to avoid interference. Now, what all the drone has got inside, generally these swarm drones, it will have large number of camera and imaging sensors to you know take picture and uh, other uh, things which it can send it the base control where it can be analyzed. It can also do the analysis. It will have lidar, which is called the light detect and ranging. These sensors are uh, basically laser pulses to measure distance and can create accurate 3D representation of the environment. So this allows the drones to navigate in a complex environment and avoid obstacles also. GPS, all you know, it gives you precise uh, information. So this drone can use GPS data to determine their own position and relative distance from other drones also. There is a unit called IMU, Inter Inertial Measurement Unit. And IMU combines accelerometer, gyroscope, and sometimes magnetometers to measure a drone's orientation velocity and acceleration so this imo provides crucial data from drone stabilization altitude control and motion estimation then proximity centers very important it could be based on ultrasonic or infrared so that the other drones which are nearby it is able to find out so that they avoid collision as such now the swan drones where do you apply i mean where can you be applied is it recce and surveillance normal drones also we do but if I send a swarm of 100 drones, I can cover a large area. Comprehensive coverage I can do. I can take a you know photo from large number of angles also. I can continue the monitoring the area permanently. You know, 30 drones goes, 30 drones comes back, the drones gets replaced. So this dynamic reconfiguration keeps on happening, and there is a redundancy also. The targets, which are the enemy targets, are there. They can be tracked by a swarm drone beautifully because there's a multiple perspective, 360 degree view is there when you have a swarm drone. Whereas if you have a single drone, it gives you only one view. That is the view. Whereas swarm drones can be configured, configured in various angles to give you large number of views. Then you can put distributed sensors on the swarm drones. You know, some can have cameras, images, some can have payload of lidar, some can have payload of bombs, some can have, have payload of missiles. A large number of things can be happen. I mean, uh, payloads can be distributed on these. So the sensors get distributed, the payload gets distributed. Uh, the swarm drones can do dynamic tracking of various targets and also can do target classification. If you have a swarm drone, very easy to find out if it is a tank, it's a BMP, it's a gun, what is it? Single drone sometimes becomes very difficult. Now, the storm zones can be used for offensive. Uh, 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 attacks. Swarm drones, you know, 100 drones comes, 
imagine they are all carrying 5 kg bomb or a 10 kg bomb and drop at a place so 100 into 10 kg 1000 kg but at the spread beautifully it is spread and the beauty of the swarm drones or any for that matter is the radar cross section is very less so very difficult to find it through a conventional radar very difficult for it to catch so millimetric wave of radars are coming which now are able to catch the drones but they are not that many most of the countries have got still the conventional uh, radars based on rf or microwave now uh, the offensive swarm when you say it can do distributed attack like if i have 100 uh, drones and a swarm so before it uh, the moment it crosses ib i can ensure that you know 30 go to one place 30 another place 40 another place do their attack and come back and in that once they reach the location, I can program it in such a fashion, or for that matter, the AI is in, built into it in such a fashion that it can do target prioritization and first maybe attack the high priority target and then go for the low priority target. So these kind of drones with mixed payload can do all this. And after it has attacked, it can give you feedback that what is the, it can do the post attack surveillance and tell you how much is the damage. No, so certain attacks which are taken place in recent times, uh, which I say the swarm drones, but they were with less swarm, but they have happened. First, it started in January 18, in uh, when in the basically happened in Russia against uh, happened in Syria against Russia, where the terrorists launched swarm drone attack on a Russian airbase and Russian naval facility in the port of Tartus. The attack is significant that this was the first time a swarm attack has taken place. Of course, Russia was able to repulse the attack because they were very crude drones. But the most successful swarm drone attack was done by the Houthis in September 2019 when they attacked the oil facilities of Saudi Arabia. It was claimed by Houthi rebels in Yemen. The AD protection which Saudi had, the missile, the radar, everything they had, they had for missiles. But they could not detect so this attack went through they used only 13 drones but these 13 drones created havoc and you are all aware of the armenian azerbaijan war there also uh, you know drone attacks took place swarm attacks where the armenia's basically tanks were disseminated through this swarm drones attacks and these were basically back the drones of turkey uh, the israel hamas war of may 21 here also Israel used a true drone swarm in conflict in May 21 with Hamas and Gaza. The idea that, that the Israeli defense forces used a swarm of small drones to locate and identify and attack Hamas militants. Once they could identify them, they used their rocket and other means to destroy them. The present Russian-Ukraine war which is going on, the Moscow was targeted by a swarm of drones on 30th May, very recent, making the first time that UAV have been have stuck residential areas of the Russian capital, and there's a panic in that. But of course, they were able to. So now, I mean, swarm drones has become something uh, like, is there no solution to attack it? Now, what are the solution if it is there uh, to attack a swarm drone? The conventional weapons which were there is, you know, use a cannon or a, a AD gun to attack, but there are hundreds and thousands the swarm will be coming. The guns will not be that effective. But if you have a gun, at least you'll be able to bring out 15 or 20 down. The second uh, method of downing these swarms is, uh, you know, the, if you read the article, sir, the US has supplied a blue halo to Ukraine. Basically, blue halo is a jammer. So basically what you're trying to do jamming the communication capability of these drones so once you jam this communication capability of these drones then these drones are not able to respond so it will either come back or land on its own or it will go back depends upon how the programming is done so it will not be able to do its mission but the only problem with this jamming is uh, first of all if these drones have Frequency hopping capabilities then very difficult to jam them because they will keep on hopping from frequency to frequency. Second is, you have to remember that if you're jamming an enemy, your own drones will also get jammed. After all, 
they are all operating in the round about the same frequency band. So, so, so first anti-drone technology, which I said was the kinetic weapon. You can use a gun. You can use a surface uh, SAM. Like Israel uses Iron Dome, they fire missiles. But you know, uh, Russia used S-400. Tomorrow, America may use a Patriot missile. But you're going to use a swarm, a drone. I mean, a, one drone of a swarm, maybe each drone may be costing 5, 10, 15 lakhs. That's all. Not more than that. And if hundreds are there, that's not even cost of a helicopter. I mean, you can, at the cost of a helicopter, you can buy hundreds and hundreds of drones. But you're going to use a costly missile worth millions to destroy a 5, 10 lakh uh, worth of drones. So it's not worth it. So you have to have some other technology. So that's how they have come something called a direct energy weapon technology, where there are two main things. There are others also, but two main based uh, technology which are there is one is a laser based technology, and another is high power microwave based technology. So, laser based technology basically, what you do is you're sending high intensity laser beam, it is directed towards the intended target. So what happens? It leads to heating, melting, or vaporization of the target. Now, these are, give a lot of advantage, including precision, speed of delivery, and ability to engage target at various distance. So these are ideal for you know single drones, missiles, aircraft. Because one is you have to have a high-power drone. You have to keep it concentrated on that and ensure that it is pinpointed at the target. Then only it will happen. Second is microwave-based DW. The uh, you, as you are aware, the microwave-based ranges from uh, one meter wavelength to millimeter wavelength. But what I'm talking about is closer to millimeter wavelengths. These weapons operate by emitting high-frequency electromagnetic waves that interact with the target's electronics. So it causes disruption in the electronics or damages the electronics. Whereas Laser weapon used to melt with heat. This is only causing electronic disturbance. So they will be able to penetrate solid materials also. So even if you put a high shield, they'll be able to penetrate and destroy the electronics. So if you have a composite structure, they'll be able to destroy the electronic system, the sensor, and the communication equipment. So this is a better and preferred methodology of uh, destroying a swarm drone microwave so they can also engage multiple multiple targets simultaneously that's the best part where a laser at one time one gun laser will be able to target only one drone whereas a uh, high power uh, microwave can target many drones together so it will be able to do a engagement of multiple targets within a short time frame and it can the best part of microwave is it can be electronically steered so when i say laser I have to steer it manually or through a motor or something to take from one drone to another drone. Whereas microwave, I mean, if you look at the face array radar, how are you steering the radar? You are doing it through electronic uh, beam steering. So same here also, the steering can be done electronically. So this provides a lot of flexibility in target tracking and engagement. Now, what is America working is uh, on this high power microwave is called tactical high power operation responder called uh, Thor, T H O R. It's a high power microwave weapon developed by uh, US Air Force Research Laboratory and it uh, uses high power uh, microwave to disable or destroy enemy electronic system. So, it's an ideal for some of drones. It was tested recently on 5th April 23 also. They have been testing it for every six months. And they did uh, engage some swarms and they were successful. So they are going to now do a bigger test in uh, 24. And hence this article which has come out where they will be able to take on more than 100 drones. That's what they are, they are planning. And with one weapon, they are say, saying. But this is also going to be not that uh, Thor is going to look onto it. They are also going to have... Uh, you know, graded systems where they're going to also take on, when the swarm comes, take on them through guns, other means, like it could be uh, laser guns, it could be also through RF to uh, jam them, and also use the microwave weapon. So they're going to use the three, four weapon types in uh, next year, 
and try to bring down the swarm of drones so that they are confident that they have a foolproof defense against swarm of drones. So tomorrow, USA or any of their people are attacked, they have the system to neutralize it. That's all I want to say, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that, uh, General Ayan. So, you know, there's so many things which uh, one is trying, which you mentioned, which are there for countering a drone. Out of this, if I was to ask you, which is the uh, uh, way to, how would you prioritize it? Which one is the one which one has to, one should work on the most and any idea you can give well, on that? Some of drones, that's why yes, some of drones, ideally it's hyper microwave, sir, because they can take on multiple drones. Otherwise, if you look at uh, Arab jamming, it's also another uh, nice method of uh, jamming. But the problem is, if those drones have frequency hopping ECCM with them, then your RF jamming may not be you know, effective. Laser, single drone, best. But swarm of drones, you have to have so many laser guns, large, multiple laser guns you know, to take on the target. And then physically, you have to move the laser guns from one target to another. When is it physically, it could be motorized. But something has to be done to move it. Whereas this could be electronically steered. That is the beauty of this. Like the way you do it in a radar zone. Thank you very much, uh, General Narayanan, for that uh, very in, you know clear picture which you have drawn of a very complex subject. You uh, told us what uh, is involved in not only the offensive as well as the defensive uh, part of swarm drones. And uh, it has uh, really made it the picture much more clearer for us. Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you. In fact, we look forward to getting you back uh, on uh, the channel once again, whenever right. something like this comes up. I'll do that, sir. Thank you very Thank much. You. And uh, with that, uh, viewers, we come to an end to this particular episode of uh, uh, Expert Opinion uh, from MRO Digest Forums. We thank you for being for watching uh, this episode. The links to uh, General Narayan's LinkedIn profile other links are there in the show notes below. This Our platform is essentially for MRO professionals, but we talk about technology-related uh, subjects. And we will be coming back to you with future episodes. Do subscribe if you feel our channel is giving you good material. And uh, you are welcome to join our group. And uh, you can drop in a message using one of the links below, and we will send you an invitation. With that, I will with once again thanking General Narayanan for his expert opinion. I'll bring this particular episode uh, uh, to a close. Thank you, viewers. Jai Hind. Jai Hind. Good day. Good day.